Hi guys, another baby just got in town and it's locks on. And I think we are going to love this one. So what are the things that came in the box with this guy? We have the manual, the tips card, the warranty card and the mountain rack. And what are the things that didn't come in the box with this guy? Communication cable, Wi-Fi dongle. And I think these things are essential for inverters of this size. Now, the first thing I noticed while unboxing this inverter that seems weird to me is this tips card. They are saying recommendation, the panel recommendation for 3.6 kilowatts, 4.2 kVA is 4,500 watts for the size of solar panel. But then 6.2 kVA is having the same recommendation. Are they trying to say 4.2 kVA and 6.2 kVA has the same size of charge controller? I don't know that yet. Let's not start this review with negative energy. Let's start with the positive energy this guy is giving, which is presentation. These guys have solid presentation. I mean, let's face it, we are already in an era where inverter design should be part of interior designs. So you as a manufacturer, if you have an ugly product, please go and fix it. Before we tick the box of um, your inverter is good, you are blah, 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 we'll tick the box of beautiful presentation before we come and check, okay, what can you offer us? How rugged is your inverter? So if your inverter is ugly or you don't have a beautiful presentation, please just go and work on it. I mean, look at this design, starting from the fan exhaust. Usually we are used to the plastic type of cover. Still is metal to the back anger. Look at, on the size of 4.2 kVA, we are having a back anger and a anger. Like, come on, just put the regular two holes. Even the 10 kVA, 6.2 kVA that we are normally used to, we just put two holes and two holes at the bottom. That's it. And you for 4.2 kVA, they are giving us a anger. And to this beautiful front facing screen, to the battery spacing, look at the battery spacing between positive and negative terminal. I love that amount of spacing. And even when I open it up, the insulation between the body parts and the battery terminal is not something that I've complained about before, but seeing how they insulate it, the amount of gap between the body and the battery terminals on this thing makes me realize that, oh, I think this is actually better. This is a better way of doing it. Okay, let's dive into what this guy can do, which are the parameters. So starting from the temperature, the temperature is regular, nothing special, minus 10 degree to 50 degree. IP rating is IP21, which means it's meant for indoor, not outdoor. The safety class is class I, which is just insulation to prevent shock under regular circumstances. This particular one has no parallel. Rated capacity is 4.2 kVA. 4.2 kVA, not kilowatts. Voltage is 230 volts. AC current is 18.3 amps. AC output current, 18.3 amps. But then they said 4.2 kVA, which makes it, that means the inverter is not up to 4.2 kilowatts, the regular ones that we have. But then 18.3 amps multiplied by 230, that gives us 4.2 kilowatts. So does that mean, is this inverter 4.2 kVA or 4.2 kilowatts? It should be 4.2 kilowatts since they are saying we can get up to 18 amps at the output. Battery is 24 volts. AC input ranges from 90 volts to 280 volts. I wouldn't recommend that range. I usually stay within the range of 170 to 250. AC charging current can go up to 100 amps, nothing out of ordinary. We've gotten 120, but 100 amps is still good. Now, PV max power, they are saying 5,000 watts, which means the tips card that we saw when we are unboxing is actually wrong. I think that's just recommendation, but it is confusing. So this one, they are actually telling us that it is 5,000 watts. The inverter is 4.2 kilowatts. Charge controller can go up to 5,000 watts, which is good. Maximum input current from PV, 18 amps, just as usual. Maximum voltage is 500 volts, the regular high PV. And charging current is 100 amps. So looking at the parameters, there's nothing out of ordinary. The manual is friendly and well detailed. Speaking of which, there are some features I found in the manual that makes me pay more attention to this device. Some 
I don't know if I should be happy about the future or not. And some are even future that we needed, but we did not even know we needed those future. And the first is low DC cutoff. This future, I don't really understand it. As we all know, to cut off load when DC gets to a certain level. So now they are saying if battery is the source and your load DC cut off get to this point, the inverter will shut down. Then the second note is now saying if battery and PV are the source and your inverter or the battery gets to this cutoff, the battery will be charging, but output will be cut off. There will be no output or the battery will be charging. I don't understand. There is PV, there is battery. And this low DC cutoff is not the same thing as battery low. It's not the same. Battery low is in the front. This one is different. I don't really know what this feature is doing. Low DC cutoff, when it gets to battery is charging, why do you have to cut off the output? So, but what I probably think is, maybe what they're trying to say is, when the inverter is off, it will not supply. But if there is PV and there is battery, the battery will be charging, but it will not supply when the inverter is off. I think that's what they are trying to say. I've not tested it, so maybe one will test it. So that feature, I don't know, sounds somehow to me, but maybe one will test it to know better. And this one particular feature that I did not even know we needed until I saw it inside this manual is low battery alarm points, low battery alarm points. You see, it might not be a big deal to so many people, but to me personally, or to everyone that likes configuring their inverter, they don't, they don't, they don't just install and just leave it like that. They like configuring every part of it. It is a big deal. You see, there are some times that when you set your low battery, maybe you are using a 24 volt, you set your low battery, let's say 24 volts for lithium. This our inverter will start giving low battery warning from like 25 volts, which there's still enough on the battery, but you have already started alarming the user that the battery is low. So it's more like false alarm and we cannot change it. We cannot change it. So sometimes we have to just reduce the low battery to maybe like 23 so that it will not start alarming the client from 25 volts. I've seen that with so many inverters, but this particular one allows us to set the points. So let's say I set my low battery cutoff to 24 volt. I can set the point at which I want the alarm to start beeping. So I can set the low battery alarm point to 24.2 or 24.1. Until I saw it, I did not even know we actually needed that feature. And I like that about this product. This inverter has still so many more features that I can't even explain yet until I test them, but those are just the ones I saw. Then one last thing that I saw that I'm like, what's wrong? What's going on? Is their alarm code. Like these guys have two page for description of alarm code. They have about 72 alarm code. Like, come on, what's going on now? This is just a mid-range inverter. It's not a premium inverter. If you are dealing with premium products, we know, okay, yes, it's normal. For 72 alarm code in this mid-range inverter, What's really going on? <laughs> so, but we'll find out why those alarm codes are much like that. If you take time to go to the manual, you'll, you'll see a lot. For now, I'll keep you guys updated on whatever we find out on this product. But for now, I think I'll give them 8 over 10 rating. I am Bashir from Interden and I'm the Chief Surgeon. If you are new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. Catch you guys in the next one.